Hello guys, Chris here and welcome back to another video. This one, my friends, I'm going to be testing a GeForce GTX 1050 Ti 4GB GDDR5 in Forza Horizon 5. We are running it, of course, using the latest NVIDIA drivers 496.49. This one is the ASUS Strix version of the card, so it comes already overclocked out of the box. And as usual, I'm running it with a Ryzen 9 5900X and 32GB of RAM to avoid any CPU or RAM bottlenecks, but you should get the same FPS if you pair this card with something like a, an i3 10100F or Ryzen 3 3100. Let's get right into it, shall we? Let's go over the settings. First, I'm playing at the 1080p resolution using the low settings. Not very low settings, by the way. There's a lower settings preset than this one. But if you've seen my GT 1030 video, it looks horrible and nobody should use it if you have at least the, the 1050 Ti, you know? So let's get into it and see what kind of FPS we can get. Look at this. This is actually very promising. Now, Today, we're actually gonna do a race. Uh, we're gonna play a race right there, start counting our FPS in our way there, uh, run through a few bushes and stuff like that. That's usually not very intensive, but hey, <laughs> at least we can see the FPS driving around. And a lot of people actually only drive around in this game. Oh, there goes my, my, my plate. Oh no, I wanted to see it. It's inspiring, you know, with the GT710 in there, but uh, never mind. Okay, oh, finally, we hit this beautiful jump right here. Awesome stuff, and we're almost there. So this seems to be a very promising experience indeed, my friends. It is not dropping from 60 frames per second. Oh, look at that, 69. We start with 69 FPS in this race. That is just incredible, my friends. Let's start counting the FPS and let's play through this race a little bit here. So uh, we actually got low FPS there at the beginning, but that was the same thing in Forza Horizon 4, actually. And then it jumped back up once again. It's a little bit more intensive with all of the cars in the screen, but it's just as intensive as like a city area like we tested in the GT1030 for example oh my god oh my god I, I, I don't I don't drive well at all guys as you can probably tell uh, but at least I am good at benchmarking so we can do this oh boy this is harder than Forza Horizon 4 and in Forza Horizon 4 I couldn't do anything it's just the rain you know guys yeah it's definitely just the rain so FPS 1% lows are actually below 60, I wasn't really expecting that. To be honest, the game actually set the low settings as default for a GTX 1050 Ti. So there's that. See, I can actually drive well sometimes if I put my mind into it. Uh oh, let's go, let's go, let's go. Sixth place, yeah, there we go. You're not gonna do this, boy. Look at the ground and tell me that that doesn't look good, especially in water puddles and stuff like that. It's incredible. Like, how is this low settings? I can't understand. To be honest, I think I'd be super happy with the low settings experience here. It's always above 60 FPS with the 1050 Ti, and uh, it's. It's gorgeous still. Oh my god, no, 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 no. Let's follow him. Yes. Oh, no. Okay, he still got us. Okay, never mind. That was... That's the best I can do there. <laughs> All right, second place is not bad at all. We are now playing at the 1080p resolution and medium settings preset. And yes, this is the MSA anti-aliasing. It's set to 2x, but it's not really as intensive as, say, for example, in GTA 5. This gets you, like three to five FPS less, and it makes the game look a heck of a lot better because there are a lot of jaggies at the low settings. Now, over here, we're actually getting 60. That is not bad at all. Let's get to another race, I guess. Here we go. Let's do this. So getting closer to like nothing. It's, it's, it's like between 50 and 60, so all right, here we go, guys. Getting 60s now. At the start, we actually dropped down into the 50s, but that's normal. Usually at the start of races, your FPS tend to drop a little bit. Uh, yeah, look at this. We're getting slightly lower FPS uh, than what we got at the starting area in the festival area. Um, this is actually the same area, so yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> Third place already, guys. We can do this. Does this guy have the same car as me? 
Yes, he does, but he has no plate, you know. Our license plate is just amazing. GT710 for the win. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, of course, if you are good at car games like me and you find yourself in first place very often, you're gonna get a higher, slightly higher FPS average, you know because, well, you aren't really rendering the other cars in this scene. <laughs> you know what? I feel bad for the AI, so we're just gonna let them pass so we can see our FPS with more cars in the screen as well. I think the other uh, match was a little bit more demanding, but yeah, as you can see, once they are in the screen, we get down into the 50s. It's not too bad still. It's perfectly playable. It's kind of like the 4K experience with the RTX 3060 Ti at extreme settings, not at medium. Uh, but yeah, FPS-wise, it's similar. And I played like that for a while, for about like an hour or so. Um, so it is perfectly playable and smooth. No problems whatsoever here. I like this experience on medium. Oh, no, wh where do you think you're going? <laughs> That's it. That's how you do it, guys. Uh, I'm, I'm probably not gonna finish first. Yeah. So, uh, god damn it. Okay, let's bump it up to high settings and restart. Getting 50s here, so that means that we're probably gonna get 40s in the, the races. Let's try another one, actually. Already dropped down into the 40s here. Look at that. 49. Not too bad still. You know, it's high settings. And the 1050 Ti is still hanging in there. And let's start counting our frames. It seems like it's pretty good. Look at that. 50 still. It didn't really move much from uh, medium settings. Of course, different areas will get different FPS, but this is very playable. It shouldn't really move that much from here, at least. And we finished first, finally. Getting down into the 40s there because of the people watching us. And yeah, I guess that's intensive, right? <laughs> 60 FPS average. You know what? Let's go down there to the other race that was probably the most intensive one out of the three that we tested so far. Uh, and let's test it out there, right here, 60s, not bad at all. Oh, what the? Oh my god. Okay, that's that's an insane jump right there. That, that, I, not on purpose, absolutely not on purpose. Beautiful stuff though. 50s now once again. Eh, I guess, yeah, it is different from the other race that we just tried out. Probably because of all of this, these reflections in the ground. Because we're not really racing inside of a town on, or anything like that. So, yeah, it might be the weather and uh, the puddles in the ground that are making it more intensive. Oh, we're first place, guys. This car is so much better in, in this, these conditions right here. It's awesome. We got a car right on our tail, by the way. It's closer to like 55, 60 frames per second on high settings. Sometimes it will drop into like the high 40s, as the 1% lows suggest. It also happened in the previous race, although that was a less intensive one. We saw a little turn where it dropped. Yeah, overall, it is a very playable and enjoyable experience on high settings with the 1050 Ti. I was not expecting this, guys. This game, man, it's so well optimized and it looks so gorgeous. Wow. Okay, so that's that. And let's go ahead and play it on D. Come on. Uh, ultra settings. Hmm. I think at ultra settings, it will start giving us those warnings because we're running out of VRAM and it might actually stutter a little bit because of that. Oh my God. Such a difference, both in visual quality and uh, FPS coming from high settings like from medium to high it was almost the same uh, what what is happening I don't care about the session every time I enter a session it kicks me out because it says that I'm I, I'm I had lost connection or whatever it's weird anyway this is looking incredible right now on ultra but you saw that little sign over here right that little warning. It will happen again and it's extremely annoying. <laughs> and you see the frame time graph, is, it sometimes has some spikes. So, uh, that's a lot of S's, sometimes has some spikes. Yeah, uh, but it does. And that indicates a stutter. You know what, for the last one, we're gonna try the Bronco. Yes, please. The Bronco is probably gonna be a pretty car, you know, very loud, maybe. Pretty. Mm -hmm. I didn't remember the word loud, so... Wow, look at those reflections. 
it looks so good. It, it kind of looks like it has some ray tracing because you can no right now you can't see the cars behind you in the reflection, but sometimes you can. Like in the mirrors, you actually can if you're playing in first person. It is dropping from 30 at times, but it does look a heck of a lot better, doesn't it? I can definitely tell the difference in pretty much anything. Will I play like this? No, I'd stick to high settings. I think that's pretty adequate here for the 1050 Ti. I enjoyed the time playing on high settings. I could do everything just fine, controlling the car and enjoying the visuals and stuff like that. You should probably avoid ultra settings because it does drop from 30 every now and again. But if you lower, for example, shadow detail, it might be above 30 frames per second all of the time. And I am still playing the game and I'm still first place somehow even though we're getting 31 FPS on average and 27 1% lows. That's been it. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'm also surprised that we only saw a single VRAM warning here on Ultra. And uh, yeah, on Extreme, of course, it won't be playable, so I won't really test that. Hope you enjoyed this look at Forza Horizon 5 with the 1050 Ti. Uh, don't forget to leave a like if you did and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll catch you in the next one very soon. As always, love you all. Bye-bye.